are you, Lady? To, what is this glowy thing? I am posting some fresh new nudes. Mm. Uh, these nudes are going to be coming to Adafruit real soon, so sign up, get notified when they're in the shop. Um, we've been selling nudes, what we call these LED flexible filaments, for a while um, in this store. They're spelled N O O D S because they're like noodles. And um, the ones that we have or have had so far are they have a positive and a negative end, and then there's this flexible filament on either side, and they differ in length and color, but then, like, this is the positive and this is the negative. The problem is, though, is sometimes you want um, to have the connections for the power come onto the same side, and so that's what these are. So these nudes, and here's one that's not powered so you can see a little better. Um, it has an FPC connector that you can solder or clip to, and then the other end, um, you can see, is just kind of melted closed. So, uh, for example, this one's blue and this one's like a warm white color. Um, if you want to have something light up, sort of like EL wire with all these like, you know, hundreds of little LEDs in it without having to have something at the other end, like this can be loose, then uh, this is the way to go. So this is uh, the warm white 130 millimeter, but we're getting all different colors. And then maybe we'll also get like the 12 volt, 24 volt versions as well for like super long single end nudes. All right, Lady Ada, what is this? Okay, you gave me this gift that you made a while ago. It's a um, rotating dial, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a great gift for testing out this 240 by 240 round display prototype that I've got here. Um, to make it really easy to connect, I'm using the iSpy connector, and then um, it connects to this ESP32 QD Pi. So that's nice, no wire required, nice and thin, but there's still two mounting holes. And the ESP32 with the gift decoder is fast enough to actually kind of give you a good, you know, response rate on the on the animated GIF. It looks nice. So um, this board's done. So this is actually a really great test. It tests the backlight. It tests high speed um, drawing, and it tests the SD card at the same time. So this is ready to go. I'm going to book this PCB, and we'll get these in the store real soon. All right, and that last one, someone says you should have went to 11. All right. Um, so you did eight designs over the break, and we posted them up. Uh, let's speed round these. And okay. uh, which, what is this? This is a, a 1.8 inch 360 by 360 um, SPI TFT display, which is really nice. Oh, that's the one you showed me today. Yeah. The prototype? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, with cool as a cucumber. Touch. Cool as a cucumber. I'm still figuring out how I want to do the connections for this, but okay. I can at least get the driver started. And okay. I wanted to have this like be back mounted. I don't know. We'll figure okay. it out. Um, this one I this one I already did and I booked the PCB. So this is the 1.28 inch round TFT display. Um, so it's a very easy, very common chipset that people use, like the GC 019A or something. Um, round display with breakout and two mounting holes. Um, this is a tiny little one. This is a 0.7 inch. This is so cute. Um, a miniature little um, TFT display that's round. Uh, SIM card socket. This wasn't part of the eight designs to build. This is just like I oh. was like, oh, I should go back to cellular. I have to do the micro SIM breakout. Um, this is a another tiny display. This one's square, but it's also like very, very small display. Um, I wanted to revise the Neo RGB Stemma board because I kind of messed it up the first round, so now I fixed it. A breakout for transparent OLED displays, I squared C interface. It's been on my list for like a decade. And then we're going to show some Sparkle Motion videos, but first here's the two designs, and then we'll play uh, four videos because okay. we have a bunch of videos. This is a Sparkle Motion Mini. Um, which is much smaller. It's like, it's tiny. It's like one square inch or less. It doesn't have 12 volt support. And this one is like a USB stick version. I'm still kind of figuring this one what out. Was those, what was those company? Gumstick. Remember Gumstick? Those, Gumsticks, yeah. Yeah, those little, they were ahead of their time. They're still around. They still do. I'm sure they do. Oh, no, I should talk, talk to them. Should talk to them. Okay, and then um, Sparkle Motion. You could sign up on the site, but these are all the coming soon. Here's uh, four videos. They're about a minute each. See on the other side. All right. Lady Ada, what's this? Well, as you can tell, I'm doing an audio reactive LED display. Mm. Um, this is the Sparkle Motion Board. And uh, right now it's doing Sparkle Audio Magic because there's a built-in I2S microphone here. It's a digital microphone, so it's really good quality. Uh, it communicates directly over I2S, so you don't need a separate codec chip. And this is read by WLED and is converted into, in this case, it's like an equalizer effect. There's a lot of different audio effects, but this one kind of is like the best for videoing because it's like kind of obvious when it's Boop. working. Boop! Boop! Um, Boop. Yeah. 
And um, so it's one of the, one boop, of the boop 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 do 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 drones in New Jersey. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, testing this next up, I want to test the infrared remote input. Uh, just one of the many things that people asked us to include on this all-in-one WLED and NeoPixel driver board. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? This is a 12 volt power supply, but it's not just any 12 volt power supply. It's a really big honking 12 volt power supply. Yeah, 25 amp output. I'm using this because I want to test the 5 amp fuse on the uh, Sparkle Motion board. Um, this is a 25 amp, 25 volt. 5 amp fuse, uh, that's why it's so big. Um, a lot of people requested a fuse on this board, and so I added one, um, but you have to test it to make sure it's actually you know, doing what you think it does. So I've got here an electronic load, uh, okay. so I can have a consistent dialed in okay. uh, current, and then I'm measuring the voltage with my um, scope just to kind of see what's going on. Yeah. And then I put this in 30 amp mode, because by default it's in three amp mode, and then I sort of slowly Dial up the amps. I get to five amps, and it's still nice and stable. Okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. So the thing is to, to remember is fuses actually um, blow, or you know, open at double the voltage. So now when we get to ten, that's where it's turned off. It's overheated because of um, the amount of current that goes through this, and it will stay open until the voltage drops down. Yeah, I was looking at the scope. You can yeah. see it'll it, before when you did that, it went poop. Yeah, so it has to cool down a little bit. Yeah. Um, when the current gets down and it cools well, there it off, goes. Oh. yeah, it turns back on. Yeah. Like and then, uh, yeah, you can, maybe you want to want to watch it as I dial this up. Three, yeah, four, go. five, six, seven, eight. Do -do. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. So, like, it, because it already blew, it, it um, turned off a little earlier because yeah. it's heat based. It it's, it's, it's a temperature based uh, cool. resistor. I mean, hot. Yeah, very hot. So uh, that's good. It blew, you know, from a cold start, it blew at exactly 10 amps, and then, you know, it'll vary a little bit um, as it goes on and off. But at least um, somewhere between 5 and 10 amps, which is exactly the spec, this fuse will open and it will uh, stay open until the current goes down uh, and it resets itself. Rad. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? I fight for the user. Oh. The very rainbow user. Um, <laughs> I'm testing out this really cool. Like yeah. thick neon neopixel, you see, it's individually addressable because the rainbow is going down the strip. It's like a one inch diameter silicone tube, so very weatherproof, outdoor proof. And um, the thing about this, which is annoying, is that this uses a 24 volt DC signal. I don't know if you can see that. There you go, 24 volts. Uh, it says UCS 1904. Don't ignore that's just it's basically neopixel compatible, but the 24 volts is annoying until. I designed this board partially because I have to test samples like this. So um, this is the Sparkle Motion board, and one of the things that it can do is USB uh, PD, power delivery. So um, you see here the little switch is switched over to the right for 20 volts, even though this is 20 and this thing wants 24, 20 is, is plenty. And then I have it plugged into like this laptop power supply over here, which is providing me uh, 20 volts at up to 5 amps. Um, and now I don't need any special power supplies or anything. I'm actually just powering and controlling the strip directly from uh, this one board, and it works great. So, yeah, super rainbowy, super cool. Running WLED. All right, Lady Ada, what's this? I'm testing out the new mini version of the Sparkle Motion board. I already ordered the PCBs for the big version with USB PD, but I also wanted to make a teeny one that was like very small and portable. And one of the things that I bumped into as I was working on it is I was trying to get the I2S microphone working, but the I2S mic I wired up to pins um, nine and 10 of the GPIO and like it wasn't working in WLED. And then I realized it's because I'm using this ESP32 mini module. And the mini module has slightly different pin availability than the standard Waroom or Warover modules because it has a built-in SPI flash. So what I had to do is fork WLED. Uh, and I even like bumped into a bug, but um, I got this working by um, forking, making the change, compiling it all in uh, platform IO. I just like did a couple, made a little faster upload, but got it uploading working. And um, now I can verify that I2S microphone works. So what I'm gonna do is a 
pull request to get my change, my fix, so that the correct pins are available on the mini module because other people might bump into the same issue. And then I'm going to continue testing. I have a couple more things I want to test, uh, infrared input and uh, the other IO pins and such. Uh, but so far, so good. I'm uh, almost done. Hopefully, we'll be able to order this board real soon now. Ooh. And that's a huge amount of top secret that we were up to over the break and more.